And let's talk about testosterone. And the question is, here, this is for a 60-year-old uh, a male. Uh, he's lost. He's uh, six foot seven. He was 310 pounds at his heaviest. Now, thanks to my protocols, he's down to 255 pounds. Uh, and he says he's experiencing, I was feeling good, but experiencing usual symptoms for a 60-year-old don't have the energy I had just five years ago. Also having challenges getting boner. And I'm pretty sure I'll have low T situation. So let's 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 do a bit of a deep dive into that. Now some of my what are my qualifications? I've coached thousands of people. Um, I'm a man. I understand what it's like to have a boner. Or what it's not like to have a boner. And sexual performance is definitely something you know, most men are interested in. <laughs> Especially me. If you know, you know. If you're a guy, you know, you know. All right. So, and energy, you know, I coach world tour riders, tour de France athletes, to entry level runners, to obese single mums and dads. Okay. So, I have a, a very wide spectrum of dealing with um, amazingly different contrasting members of the public from, you know, the VO2 max of, you know, 90 down to a VO2 max of maybe 20, all right? Um, all different types of people I get to work with, and I really enjoy that. So that's my passion. So that's my experience. That's my qualifications there. Real life, like I get to, I don't get bound by any regulations or university doctrines or I don't work for any hospitals. I am total free agent on the ground, all right? Not bound by any stipulations or restrictions. Totally free in, and that's, I think that's a great, that's the best learning environment for me anyway. Uh, so I've used anabolic steroids myself, and I've also been a natural athlete. The natural of the natural, like no caffeine, no cacao even, uh, you know, that side of the fence to running, you know, trend below a cetate and, you know, a thousand milligram of test a week, etc. So I've, I've experienced both sides of the fence. I can speak from experience. Um, I've been Mr. Virgin Boy, you know, absolute virgin. <laughs> I've lived the virgin life, you know. Um, I've lived that life and I've also been in, involved with sex scandals right, in Thailand and people making, doc, the boyfriend making documentary about me. And no, no hate to any of you know, them. I bring that up because I just find it amusing and stuff. But yeah, so I've gone from you know, the, the, being labeled a rapist and a pedo and a player and a sex scandal and sex parties in Thailand, all this, I'm a gigolo and all this stuff. To being Mr. Full, purest virgin, all right? So uh, both sides of the fence there, all right? So that's what makes me an absolute leader in these areas because I've just been on both sides of the fence. And I, I'm, you know, who else better to learn from? I'm 46 in a few weeks. I'm not 60, so I don't know, I don't know what it's like to be 60, but I've definitely coached a lot of 60 and 80-year-olds and, you know, et cetera. Over the years, I've met a lot of, you know, talked to a lot of people. I talk to people all the time. I'm, I'm you know, I'm a lo- I love to talk, hear people's stories and ask questions and learn. So energy, all right? So we've lost some weight. We don't have the energy. Now, how do we define energy? I would define energy as motivation. I would define energy as how many watts you can put on the bike, how fast you can run a mile, uh, maybe how much can you lift in the bench press, things like that. What you what you normally do and you might, might lose the energy for that. Then there's a few reasons we might lose the energy, but we might lose the motivation for something. Like someone said to me, Harley, like right now it's like 10 o'clock, so I'm a bit past my bedtime, what I recommend anyway. If someone said to me, Harley, you know, let's go for a run up Mount Lofty right now. I'd be like, dude, it's like, you know, it's past 10 o'clock at night. I mean, like I could I could do that, but I'm like, why? why? What's the point? And like, well, there's like a million dollars or, or there's like, a, there's, we're going to do a Andrew Tate, you know, prank collab or whatever okay, okay let's do that that sounds fun you know so the, the motivation brings energy so we have to we have to be wary of like well maybe we've lost motivation for some things because they're not as important to us in life anymore so then we don't have the energy that we used to have you know, or maybe we don't have the obligation to do things maybe we've become like i don't have any obligation to get out of bed and work like, i've made all my money i don't have to worry about money ever again but I st- I, because i love my work that gets me out of motive. That gets me out of bed. That's my motivation. Okay, I'm not getting out of bed to make money because I have to. I'm not getting out of bed because I'm like you know people are whatever. I'm just I'm, I get out of bed because I want to, not because I have to. Does that make sense? So the energy for me comes because I'm doing all I love to do every day, helping people with their health and fitness. You know, fixing bikes, flipping shoes. Just I love the stuff. What I do, you know, I love it. I love the hustle. Um, like I was in the shop today buying some shoes. Now I'm going to sell them at a four dollar profit. Four dollar profit. 
People are like, oh, well, why would you waste time? Because I enjoy it. You know, I'm like, oh, someone's going to get a nice pair of Air Max 2017s at a killer price. Yeah, I'll make four bucks or whatever. It's all good. So, you know, I've had plenty of deals. Someone gets some deals off me. So it's just part of the deal. But I had the energy for that. If someone's like, oh, I've got to ride my bike down to Nike or I've got to get out of this and I've got to get a FedEx and I've got to do that. They'd be like, I just don't have the motivation or the energy for it because they're not into it like I am. Okay. So it's the same thing. Like if you, when you're into something, you, you have the energy will come. Now, the question of the energy is what if we really like something but we just we just can't do it like or we just can't do it as well as we could because we, we don't have the energy because we've got the motivation we we enjoy doing it you know like maybe it's let's talk about sex you know, maybe we've, we've got a partner we're really into them we care about them or we've whatever we attracted what would you know, all the ta- all the all the boxes are ticked but we just we just find our energy is not happening and they're, and they're, they're making a comment of that they're like oh you know you know you know where's your, where's your fire where's your passion okay so then that's the legit situation, okay? Where we're in a high stimulus environment where we want to perform, where we like to perform, where we have performed, but we just can't perform to the level we want or used to, then that's where we look at nutrition, we make sure we're getting enough carbohydrate, you know, we're going to bed early enough. Like, if you go to bed at 7 o'clock at night, this is where I'll lose people straight away, but do it. Do it before you knock it. Go to bed at 7 p.m. for a week, and then you tell me, at the end of that week how much of a different person you have unlocked. Right, I did this, I first did this in like, I think it was like 2006. Maybe I did it before, but this is where I remember 2006 when I was cycling my bike from uh, Seattle, Cedro Woolley, just north of Seattle there, down to uh, Los Angeles. I was like a, a Doug Graham event there up in, with uh, Christina and the, and the gang, Robbie Barbaro, and, uh, back in 2006, the early days. And then I cycle my bike down, and so I, w- I would go to bed because I didn't really, I wasn't really running very powerful lights, so I didn't really do, do too much night riding. I did a little bit, but most nights I was in bed like at sun at sunset, yeah. And it's in September, October, so the sun's coming down, you know, November there, and the sun's coming down, you know, quite early. And I would just, and it was the mornings were cool, so I'd stay in stay in my sleeping bag until uh, it warmed up a bit of the sun, and I just listened to podcast. Uh, podcast mp3s you know i had like a 256 megabyte mp3 player you know like so still about two hours of podcast on there so I just put that on repeat and uh tony robbins stuff and stuff like that so i would just, that that week of doing that man that just transformed my brain like you know and um just because i had i didn't have a real like and i'd done bike touring before obviously i'd cycled across australia but doing that u.s trip I wasn't in a real time. Like I had three months. I had three months to get from Seattle to LA. <laughs> you know, it's not that's, that's not a very far distance, and it's quite a lot of time. So I wasn't in any rush. I would just, you know, I would stay in my sleeping bag. I'd go to bed early. I wasn't in this rush, you know. And uh, pretty amazing trip. But that just really etched the good things in my brain. So I would recommend highly go to bed at seven p.m. for a bit. All right, eight p.m. Okay. Oh, that's too much. Like, what? No, no, no. This is this. This is not forever doesn't have to be forever and if you want it to be forever do it but this is just an experiment to watch your nerve energy come up and the penile performance your dong is strong gust when our nerve energy is strongest okay so i've, I've used you know i've had uh you know i've used all types of different um you know penile performance drugs like you know cialis viagra things like that um watermelon juice you know, beetroot powders, you know, marker powder. I've, I've experimented with all these things and they all work. But also the, the main one really that's overlooked is going to bed early, like 7 p.m., uh, 8 p.m. Because if, if that nerve energy is there, then the dong, it just, everything works so much better. It's insane, right? And I've done the experiments, you know. And people, oh my God, blah, 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 blah. Like, you know, and, the, and people will try to punish me for my transparency. It's like, well, dude, I've got the rock hard, fat, thick cock because I've done the experiments. You know, I know, I know it works, okay? You might be a little, whatever, limp dude over there, but you may, maybe laughed at me, but I know what's working over here. And, and the girls don't care how you got your boner, guys. All right, High Pegman doesn't care how you got it. High Pegman cares that you got it, okay? But going a bit earlier, like 7, 8 p.m., that is a fucking huge one. And I also noticed it with women as well, all right, women getting super aroused, if they go to bed earlier consistently, then they be- that changes their hormones and they become very, very sexually aggressive. 
So be careful with that, guys. If you've got a girl who's already a bit too frisky, make her to go to bed late, late after late after late, and that will just take the edge off her, her um, you know, sexual aggressiveness. Okay. So there you go. If you find yourself like too much of a nympho dude, then go to bed late, and you'll find that will reduce your sex drive, and it will, or, or it will reduce your sexual function, and vice versa. If you want to increase sexual function, go to bed at 7 p.m., 8 p.m. All right. Turn off. You take your phone away. You listen to a podcast if you want, but just have that blue light off and put an eye mask on or a t-shirt over your face and just do that. And that will just really regenerate nerve energy massively. All right. This, this, even this, doing this podcast now is really too late. I've got blue light in my eyes. I'm reading the screen, doing the podcast. This is not good for optimizing testosterone, sexual performance. And there's an X factor there. There's an X factor there. I could inject must inject or rub your know, test gel, prescription grade test gel. Um, so real shit. And, uh, and be having late nights and not have the same level of sexual performance as me being Mr. Natty going to bed at 6, 7, 8 p.m. or 9 p.m., okay? So I, I would say that the, the, the biggest thing with sexual performance as a guy with testosterone is, just lifestyle-wise, is what time do you go to bed, okay? If you go to bed earlier, you will have better erection. You will have better sexual performance. This is fact. You have better recovery. There's X factors there. There's I bet there's stuff that science doesn't even know. I mean, science, science is we're so new on science with the human body. Like science says, food combining is a myth. Oh, there's there's no explanation. Food food combining doesn't exist. If you eat watermelon, after cashew nuts, you'll be fine. You know, but go and do that. Go and have. As many nuts as you want. Like have have handfuls of nuts and, and chips or whatever. And then afterwards have like a watermelon smoothie. And once your gut just go blah, 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 blah. Versus vice versa. Have the watermelon smoothie for breakfast. And then have your nuts or chips at dinner. And notice how your digestion is totally different. Even though you've had the same exact foods, you've just switched up the order. You've done some natural hygiene food combining. If you know, you know. And you know, and it's, but science says that doesn't exist. There's no such thing as focus on it. But anyone can prove that to himself. Okay, so you know, like I don't wait for science to confirm shit. I I I be my own scientist, you know, quote unquote, and just try shit out. All right. So yeah, and especially when it comes to going to bed early. But again, where's the money in that? People going to bed early that that affects economies. You will not hear you. If anything, you'll hear people get don't go don't go don't sleep in bed. Just stay up. Don't if you can't sleep, get out of bed and do something. That's the worst thing. That's the worst advice ever. Where in nature would you turn the lights on? I can't sleep in my little jungle hut of nests of leaves. I'm going to turn the light on and go scroll TikTok. No, then your cortisol comes back on. Your dopamine gets all whacked out. Your melatonin gets whacked. Okay, stay down. Stay relaxed. Sleep and rest are two different things. Oh, I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I'm tossing and turning. Well, now you're not resting. You should. You need to rest. It doesn't really matter if you can't sleep. You need to rest. If you're not sleeping, you want to be resting. If you're not resting, be sleeping in bed, or have, maybe having you know some some relaxation activities. You know, but if you if you're in bed and you're trying to sleep and you can't, that's okay. Just get rest and relax. You know, a lot of people tussle and turn and they just create their cortisol spike in bed at three a.m. It's like, dude, what are you doing? Just relax. Now, getting enough carbohydrate. <sighs> whoa, 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 whoa. So I would naturally want it down. Um, no sleeping tablets needed here. One thing I've never used is sleeping tablets. I've just, I'm like, what would I use? <laughs> I just can't imagine using a sleeping tablet. I'm just like, maybe I'll, I'll have to try one one day to see what it's all about. But I'm just, you know, I have some carbohydrate in the evening. I'm just like, I'm, I'm going to bed, you know? <laughs> Get up early the birds and just, yeah. But anyway, so, yeah, getting that early nights, man, makes such a big, big, big difference at restoring. There's X factors there, man. There's definitely X factors. So I wouldn't recommend this person gets on testosterone. I would recommend, now I'm not ruling it out either. I'm just saying, go to bed, get a blood test tomorrow. Get your free testosterone, your estrogen, your SHBG, which is your sex hormone binding globulin. So these three things, estrogen, SHBG, and free testosterone, okay? If they, don't, if they won't do your free testosterone, just do testosterone. But having the SHBGT, uh, SH, SHBGGT, SHBG, see, late at night, the brain doesn't work as good. Um, and I'm not on any stimulants today either. So, that's nothing with stimulants. Like, don't use stimulants. Like, I definitely find, like, stimulants, like caffeine, etc. they can have a negative effect on penile performance. You know, it's, um, 
whilst things like cocaine and that can make girls really aroused for guys it can be it can inhibit blood flow and because it restricts blood flow okay it constricts capillaries etc so if you have any, that's what i'd recommend to stay off the caffeine or the cocaine or anything stimulants like that even some like dexamphetamine and you know, adderall stuff for some guys that can really inhibit performance okay because it restricts blood flow so that's another thing to consider as well and you can't sleep as deep on those drugs so that affects your performance next day as well so there you go so early nights avoid the stims get the blood test free testosterone estrogen and shbg and then circle back with us in the group and we'll have to see where you're at um yeah let's go with that and then i think that's going to make a big difference huge difference let's, let's start with there let's get, see where let's see where you're at because what we could do now you could go to a t- t- trt clinic they just jab you up no worries boom hey here's 120 milligram a week see you later boom and yeah no nah. i mean if we want to gain weight then yeah injectable testosterone boom it's incredible for gaining weight but most people aren't looking to gain weight most people are looking to lose weight so then it's like why would you use testosterone testosterone is a weight gainer okay testosterone even at low dosage is a weight gainer look at when girls take when, when they do the uh, f to m you know they're doing 100 milligram a week or, or less and they just gain all this weight and they become all masculine looking which is fine if that's your goal i'm just saying that don't Use be people often get on testosterone. They, I'm going to lean out a bit. No, you're not going to lean out on testosterone. You're going to gain weight. Your estrogen is going to go up. Your testosterone is going to go up. These are anabolic hormones. All right, SHBG is going to go down, and so you're going to become in a more anabolic state. Okay, so which is fine if that's the goal, but I'm not a fan of taking medication. If you could, if you can uh, avoid it, you know, or, or if you can use a lower dosage. Okay. So again, it depends what your goal is. No, no, one's looking, no one here is looking to be an IFBB pro like Greg Trini Duche or Frank Natty, we're just saying. So I, I recommend keep it natty if you can, especially if the goal here is weight loss. Definitely keep it natty. Um, and I can speak from personal experience and you know, you know with fact, if you've been watching my stuff long enough, I will not bullshit my audience on these topics. I will tell you exactly the truth. Not what you should hear, what you need to hear, what is the truth, what's going to help you the most, okay? I'm not going to like, I'm, my name's not Greg Duche, well, like half truth for it and BS. When it comes to these topics, I'll give you the full truth, man. And I can speak from personal experience, all right? Um, I've used these compounds extensively. Right? And I'm not, the, I'm not an expert on steroids, like I am a nutritional weight loss. I'm like a, you know, I'm a personal practitioner on the steroid part, but I am definitely an expert in the weight loss and the... Uh, things like other things i talk about you know cycle performance etc but with steroids you know i'm still you know i've only been doing steroids for like what nine years so my experience is relatively low to compare to some people out there but then at the end of the day steroids anabolic okay anabolic steroids anabolic don't use them if you want to lose weight um what else so that's, that's the blood work do you get your hemoglobin checked as well your hemoglobin and your ferritin count and your vitamin b12 but then again, if you're doing my protocol, you're doing vitamin B12 shots, so you don't need to get that tested. If the B12 is going to test, going to cost you more money, don't get B12 test. Just do your B12 shots, thousand microgram uh, a month is what I recommend most my athletes to do, and people who want to be athletic, they want to be parents. If you got kids, you're an athlete, all right? Kids is kids is a freaking huge responsibility. Okay, so you're doing, you know, if you if you got kids, then vitamin B12 is a good supplement you should be taking, in my opinion, um, regardless of your diet. Okay, it's not a vegan thing; it's just a lifestyle thing. Um, and then let's talk. Let's look. Another, let's wrap it up quick. As we, let's wrap it up quickly as well. That you know, or another thing as well is like sometimes when we change our diet and lifestyle, we change our conscious thoughts where we feel maybe a, a bit less connected to our partner or people around us, and then that we have less connection. So that that can often affect our libido for that person or in general. You know, we, we might feel a little bit distant from them. We'll be like, eh. And that, so that's another factor as well. So when you've got, for, I'll, I'll speak from my personal experience. When you've got like a, a, for me, a female partner, I'm a straight dude. If you swing both ways, all good, whatevs. I'm, I'm a straight dude. So I measure my libido on the women in my life. And it makes a huge difference if you've got a woman out there who's really frisky or sexy, or she's very feminine, that stuff will definitely stimulate you. Like, I'll be, you know, all my girlfriends, you see my girlfriends, you know, they're all, you know, they're all very feminine looking um, when they're living with me, 
And so that can definitely is a stimulator. You know, it's like a, it's like it's like working on a in a mango factory or on a mango mango plantation. Like you just all these mangoes in front of you. It's like, oh man, mango. Yeah, I'll have some of that. You might not be thinking, might not be really that hungry for it, but the mangoes will stimulate appetite. Okay, so I'm not sure. You know, our friend here, which you know, I won't. We're talking general now. This is for anyone out there, whatever sexual orientation you you swing you know if you're around people who don't really stimulate you sexually then that can definitely chop off the libido part all right or if the connection has been you know lessened in any way okay emotionally or physically or something's happened or you know there's a chink in the relationship etc so that that can also affect libido or or your self-confidence maybe someone says something to you and you uh, then you you feel like less sexual confident, and that can definitely affect libido. And that, so our testosterone can be totally fine, but there's an X factor of like our self sexual confidence has been taking a bit of a dive. I'm like, oh, I'm not really feeling it with this person or whatever. Okay, so and estrogen is very very important as well. Like if you if your estrogen's low, you're you're your fucking dick really ain't working at all. Okay, so estrogen is a huge 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 as important as testosterone. In fact, I've had uh, low testosterone and still being quite sexual just because I'm around, you know, sexy women. And then, you know, I've had low estrogen and still had good performance, but yeah, low estrogen is not a good place to be, okay? I would rather have low testosterone versus low estrogen. Estrogen is so important. I, I, I like the feeling of estrogen. Well, that's why I like things like d and stuff because they just have that estrogenic effect, which when you're really dry and lean like me, then a little bit extra estrogen is uh, it feels pretty good as well. So okay, that's the deal there. Estrogen is very important. Uh, get that tested. Estrogen, free testosterone, and SHBG, and circle backwards. But yeah, it, it, you know, like I, I've got guys. Um, I remember before I got my vasectomy as well. Did something. Who who's talking about all these topics we're talking about tonight? You know, who's talking about this in in one one hit? Uh, that's all I've the about to talk from experience. You know. Um, vasectomy before I got my vasectomy I was always paranoid about getting someone pregnant and then I got a vasectomy and I was like damn I'm fucking like this is a whole liberation vibe man so that can be a factor as well like you, someone can in their consciousness can expand and go shit I could get someone pregnant I don't want that and so you become a little bit like less sexual because you're like oh, I don't want you know, I don't want to get anyone pregnant as you know but then you get a vasectomy and you're like, man, I'm, I, I need to go and fucking bust a nut in someone, you know? Like, I need to go bust a nut in her. Like, uh, that's my duty. <laughs> you know, so then that, that can definitely raise your libido, okay? So there's testosterone and then there's libido. I put those things as separate. So my advice tonight is more on boosting libido, all right? Because we don't know if our friend here has actually clinically low test, you know? And then again, some people can run really, really good at low, like me, I can run very, very high performing at low testosterone, okay? As long as my estrogen is good, I'm still really good performance. And I've ran my testosterone estrogen super high and I perform really good there as well. So it's like, I've never ever taken estrogen blockers. I don't believe in those things. Just do more cardio and eat less fat and your estrogen will, if you want it to drop, it'll drop it down a bit more. Um, but yeah, the estrogen just work itself out anyway, you know, eventually, especially if you're doing my protocols. That's just the deal there. Um, yeah, so I would say if our friend, if anyone out there, guys, if you are looking to boost your libido, then start with going to bed 7, 8 p.m. Make sure you get enough carbohydrate. Uh, make sure you're not using any stimulants or cut your stimulants right back down. Less is more when it comes to penile performance. And, you know, have solid connections with people you are into. And, you know, if you're a guy, then hang around chicks who are into you, man. And that myself, if friends, is is a is a in my opinion is a libido enhancer. Okay, go to where the women value you. That may mean mean a different app. It might be a different school. It might be a different address, a different postcode, a different country. You know, a different way you dress, whatever. Go to where the women appreciate you if you're into women, and that in alone can really raise your libido. Just being around, you know, women who are into you and who want to pleasure you, and vice versa. So that's a huge one as well. Uh, if you're with some you know, post wall screaming banshee. Then yeah, you might be thinking, oh, I, I'm I'm a <laughs> I'm selling, but you know, I get that. But yeah, you, whatever your goal is in life, is surround yourself with people who help you view your goal. Okay, 
I mean, heroin addicts do it. You won't see a heroin addict living in the bush. They'll be around there where they can get their hit. Okay, so be be inspired by them in that, in a good way, is go to where you get can get your hits in life, your healthy hits, okay? Go to where you can get the healthy hits where you're appreciated and where things are easier for you to obtain, etc. okay? Hopefully that answers some questions. A little bit of a deep dive, but uh, we'll try and cover some bases and let's hopefully we can get some more information and further progress on this topic. But yeah, that's my, how to boost testosterone naturally. They're my tips, man. Get enough carbs, no stimulants or less stimulants and go to bed earlier and you will see, because most people go and, when most people go, I want to increase my testosterone, they're looking for libido, they're looking for focus, they're looking for motivation, they're looking for muscle gains, all right? And injectable testosterone will just grow your muscles. You don't have to train, it will just grow them. All the studies confirm that. You want to just use tests, it will confirm that, all right? If if I give someone, you know, a thousand milligram of test and train a week, you're growing, you're getting muscular, you're going to gain weight. It doesn't matter if you train or not, you can just... You cannot train. You're going to grow muscles. You're going to sprout muscles more than your twin brother. Your twin brother, who's absolutely natty and training and hard in the gym. You will be at home in bed, just walking around, you know, banging your chick or whatever, or your dude or whatever you're into, and you'll grow more muscle on a, a you know a gram a week of juice than your twin brother doing everything right as a natty. One hundred day and night difference. Absolute day and night difference. So, but when it comes to libido, we are talking about lifestyle changes so most people want to boost their testosterone for libido enhancement and that yeah not going to bed going to bed past 9 p.m and wanting more libido that's just you know <laughs> that's like that's like carrying water in a paper bag you can just sort of do it but like what are you doing why are you having late nights if you want to increase libido like this is we're carrying water in paper bags like it's just it sort of works but not very well is it get a bucket go to bed early and uh, just do the experiment for a week and then you report back, people.